For years, they've terrorized us. The, the bump in the night, the scratch in the walls, the squeak of the door. Who are these invading monsters of the dark? None other than mankind's greatest enemy, rats. They steal our food, destroy our homes, and infect us with disease. We can't let these beings of devastation oppress us anymore. This is the War on Rats. While there are over 50 species of rats in the world, let's identify our most common enemies first. The Rattus ratus, aka the Roof Rat, and the Rattus norvegicus, aka the Norway Rat. Both of these beings belong in the order Rodentia in the family Muridae, but they have key differences between them. The Roof Rat is outfitted with a tail longer than its thin body, it has large ears and dark brown to black fur to help it blend into the shadows. While having poor eyesight, especially this guy, since his eyes got stuffed out, their advanced hearing, taste, touch, and smell are more than enough to make up for this setback. Weighing only three to eight ounces, these rats use their small claws to skillfully climb up walls, vines, and trees, and utilize their long tail to help them balance while scaling these heights making them capable of infiltrating most domiciles from above. The Norway rat is a bit different in looks compared to the roof rat. This creature has a tail that is shorter than its head and body combined. Their body is thick and rotund, with small ears and light gray fur. These beings also have poor eyesight, but are excellent swimmers, even capable of holding their breath for up to three minutes underwater. With this aquatic ability, Norway rats are able to get into your homes not just through cracks, but also your toilets. So the next time you have to take a leak, make sure there's nothing in there that can squeak. Some people may think that they would mix up rats and mice since they have very similar characteristics. But trust me, you'll know if you caught a rat. These suckers are huge compared to a mouse. An honorary rat I want to mention is the California kangaroo rat. These guys are tiny for a rat weighing only about 2.4 ounces. With a small, round body and rounded head, these creatures can most easily be identified by their long feet and long furry tail. Based on the kangaroo part of their name, you'll probably most likely guess correctly that these rats jump around like kangaroos, and are even capable of jumping distances up to 6 feet. Despite how cute these rats are, we will not focus too much on them, as they are not a threat to our livelihoods, they are actually critically endangered themselves. In order to properly plan against our adversaries, we must first understand how they think. Rats are masters of survival and persistence. Their minds are especially advanced for such a small being, having place neurons that make them capable of memorizing the layout of their home and recognize the danger of anything new or moved in the area i.e. traps. Active mostly at night, they are persistent explorers, able to utilize any form of entrance to get into a house, as well as create their own entrance in order to get to their precious resources. The roof rat is found frequently in coastal regions, as they are often distributed from sailing ships. These agile climbers then invade and create nests off the ground in people's attics, palm fronds, and overgrown shrubs and vines. They especially love riparian zones and will explore far from their nests through trees and electrical lines in search of citruses, nuts, and slugs. Alternatively, the Norway rat prefers to stay close to the ground. They create burrows that are near a structure, such as a pile of debris, the foundations of a house, or near a garden bed. They stick close to their burrows and will remain low while exploring the immediate area for fruits, nuts, or meat. An important note about these two species is that they are also at war with each other. These rats will attack each other on sight and fight to the death.
The most common sign of both of these rats is what they leave behind, specifically their poop. Measuring typically about half a centimeter to two centimeters long, rats will defecate anywhere and everywhere, and they defecate a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Rats also leave behind oily smears on highly frequented routes as a way to mark where they have safely traveled. Rats can cause an extensive amount of damage by simply existing in our homes and farms. Their droppings are known to carry many ectoparasites, such as fleas, and diseases such as leptospirosis, salmonellosis, and hantaviruses, which cause HPS, hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. This disease can be picked up by any man, woman, or child that breathes or come into contact with droppings that contain hantaviruses. Early symptoms of HPS are fever, muscle aches, and fatigue. Within a few weeks, the person will have an extremely hard time breathing, nausea and vomiting, and dizziness. If not treated early, this disease can even be fatal. However, this disease is very rare, with only 850 cases reported in the U.S. between 1993 and 2021. Our real problem with rats is the damage they cause by chewing and digging. Rats are notorious chewers. They'll chew through just about anything in order to wear down their ever-growing teeth. This includes electrical wires, water pipes, and thin walls. These incisors allow them to invade spaces with a crack of only half an inch which they then widen in order to ease passage to and fro. In agricultural settings, the roof rat can be a major problem, especially in citrus and avocado orchards. These rats will eat oranges and avocados from the inside out, leaving behind only the rind, almost as if they are taunting us with their destruction. They'll also do the opposite with lemons, eating the rind but leaving behind the naked fruit flesh hanging on the branch. Rats can even invade our food processing facilities, eating and contaminating any grains, fruits, or nuts passing through. If left unchecked, a facility runs the risk of being overrun by rats and possibly being shut down. Globally, rats destroy or consume about 20% of our food supply and can cause over $20 billion in food losses. In order to protect our food and resources, we need to take more action in exterminating these pests from our homes and establishments. So, you discover your house has been invaded by rats. You've seen all the signs and maybe even the rats themselves. What can be done to eradicate them? Some people may think that having a cat would be enough of a deterrent for rats. But at most, the rats just avoid any room a cat is in, and cats usually have no desire to catch rats. They instead prefer smaller rodents and birds. So what are some traps that are actually effective? The first and most effective way to catch a rat is a rat snap trap. A small block of wood with a metal bar attached to it that can be pulled back with a loaded spring. And when the rat comes up to it, the bar snaps and kills the rat. A popular bait for attracting rats is Jif peanut butter. The sugarier the peanut butter, the better. My teammate Katrina will now give a live demonstration on how to properly set up this trap. Okay, so this is a Victor snap trap, and how you're gonna set it up is, before you do anything, you wanna put your peanut butter or whatever you're using as bait on, so you don't snap your fingers. So for this specific trap, it has this little um, stand that moves and you're going to take your peanut butter and just put it in this little platform. You can kind of use your fingers or a stick to kind of get it in there. Um, and while we set this up we're using gloves. Just because we've used this trap before we've caught in mice and rats on here so for sanitary reasons you want to do that to make sure you're not spreading germs. Um, so to set this up, you're going to take this metal hook right here and you're going to place it back using both fingers. Make sure you have a firm grip on it with your left right um, thumb, sorry, your left thumb. And then you're going to take this little hook bar right here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that this stand is out 
far enough so this is latched in sufficiently otherwise it's going to hook up and we actually got some um, footage of that you're going to slowly release tension making sure that that is there and now you have a set rat trap um, be careful with it because it can be easily triggered and you're just going to place that wherever so for example we've seen some um, rat scat over here so we might want to place it in this little um, area so when they run out they get in here they look for the peanut butter and it snaps on them you also want to make sure that there is enough room for the snap trap to go off like you wouldn't want to have it pushed in closer to here to where the snap trap would hit over here and then the rat would run off so placement is also something good to think about we even have a video of a similar trap a mouse trap in action Some snap traps include a glue board to them, but if you want to reuse the trap in the future, I would not advise utilizing this part, as the trap becomes unusable if rotting rat bits are stuck to it. These snap traps are your best bet for trapping rats, being effective and cheap, literally costing only $2.97 at your local Home Depot. However, not everyone likes to deal with the cleanup of a guillotine wrap, and if your fingers are caught while setting up this trap, then you're in for a world of hurt. An alternative to a rat trap is a bait box. These are small boxes that can have bromethalin placed in them. Bromethalin is a highly potent rodenticide that causes rats' nervous system to stop producing energy. It is said that only a single feeding of bromethalin is needed to kill a rat. This trap is good at preventing any non-target animals in the area, such as cats, dogs, or kids, from ingesting the poison, and can kill multiple rats at a time. The problem with this trap is that the rats die a day or two after eating the poison, which can lead to a dead rat in your wall if they did not leave the area. Electrical boxes are also an effective method of killing rats. However, these things are pricey, with some costing over $50. They are battery operated and are able to kill a rat with a lethal shock. It's easy to clean up and dispose of the body, and the only real downside is pricing and checking the batteries every once in a while to make sure they did not run out of energy. With all of these traps, you want to strategically place them, as rats tend to follow the same routes they have established in the room. Look for any droppings and smears, then place a trap in that area as close to the wall as possible. Combining traps can increase the efficacy in killing large amounts of rats. Nevertheless, we know that rats are smarter than they look. If a rat goes to a trap, sets it off, but does not kill, they'll learn to not go to the traps, making the traps useless. This problem can be solved with just a little bit of time. Put out the traps with the bait, but do not set them, and pour a little bit of flour on the floor to track the rat's movement. Keep dispersing traps throughout the room each day until you see that some of the baits are left behind. Then set all the traps at once, and your rat problem will be gone. One other effective rodent control method in agricultural settings is having owl boxes around your orchards. Not only will barn owls hunt any rats in the area, but they'll also take care of any other rodents, such as gophers, moles, and mice. Despite all the damage, illnesses, and hardships they have bestowed upon us, humans still have some sentimentality regarding rats. We acknowledge their intelligence enough to use them as test objects and experiments. We deliberately take them into our homes and care for them as pets. We've had many famous rats as well, such as Rizzo the Rat from The Muppets, Splinter, who raised the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and of course, the most famous rat of all, Remy, a rat tattooey. Our battle with rats will be never ending, but in the end, just like us, everything they do is just their attempts to survive this cold, cruel world. Rats, we're rats, we're the rats. We pray at night, we stop at night. We're the rats. I'm the giant rat.
that makes all of the rules. Let's see what kind of trouble we take ourselves into.